Welcome to the ACS Technical Advisory Board podcast series, where we talk all things tech including data, cyber, AI, blockchain, and Internet of Things. Meet your host, Dr. David Cook, Vice President of the Australian Computer Society's Technical Boards. David is a technology advocate dedicated to advances and progression of computing and human-computer interaction. In today's episode, David will be talking with Peter Leonard about AI's capabilities and possibilities having been driven by rapid change, and how does the law keep up with it all, and what is the status and future of skills needed to be able to navigate AI for IT professionals. Peter Leonard is a very rare person. He's a lawyer and he's an expert in AI. That means that associations like the ACS are keen to hear about the intersection between the capabilities and the possibilities that are being driven by rapidly evolving issues for artificial intelligence. Peter Leonard, welcome to the podcast. G'day, David. It's great to be here. Let's start with the the tough question straight off. You practiced technology law, business law, for 30 years or more, and you left big law to work in the business school and talk about AI ethics. Why did you do that? Well, there's nothing like filling in timesheets for 30 years to make you want to leave the law. So um, one of the great joys of uh, retiring as a partner of a big law firm is not filling in timesheets anymore and not having to worry about how I'm going to feed young lawyers. Um, But seriously, um, one of the things that um, gets tiring in the law is people framing questions very narrowly and carefully in order to get a yes, no answer as to whether something is legal. And I was increasingly finding, as I was looking at issues around data and then AI, advanced data analytics and AI, that often the answer was, well, strictly this is legal, but you probably don't want to do it, either because the law will is likely to change and make it illegal within the life of the product that you're thinking of selling, or because when you go to another country or the EU, you won't be able to do it. So you'll be designing your systems and your processes in a way that's different country by country. So most businesses want to do something globally and they want systems that they can implement without expensive re-engineering. So often the right answer is, well, you should think about whether you want to do it or not based on um, what your anticipated life of the product is rather than whether you can do it legally in Australia today. So I guess that uh, brings out the next question, which is um, given the uh, the important distinction between law and technology, um, is the law able to keep up with the development, for the, the rapid development of AI? It's a really interesting question, David, because um, the law used to prescribe whether something was legal or not by creating prohibitions. But the law is not as stupid as some people think it is. It's re- increasingly the, le- the legislatures have recognised that um, many of the issues around the treatment of data are about the minimisation, the mitigation of risks through risk of harms through inappropriate uses of advanced data analytics and AI. So how do you manage risk? Well, you make organisations do risk assessments and then based on those risk assessments, work out what controls and safeguards they should put in place. So what the law is now doing is mandating circumstances in which risk assessments should be done and then creating consequences for organisations that either don't do the risk assessments, don't do them properly or don't implement proper risk mitigation steps based on those assessments that they've done. So I use the analogy of environmental assessment. You know, a few years ago... Um, the law recognised that when you're looking at building a new airport like Western Sydney Airport, you need to consider a big range of circumstances. You need to consider water quality, noise, effect on birds and other wildlife in the environment and so on. Well, similarly with AI, it can have many adverse effects and harms. And what you need with that is organisations to do proper risk assessments and work out 
how they can implement and use AI in way that uh, in ways that don't cause harms, and then ideally create some transparency around those risk assessments, so you actually know whether organisations are doing them and doing them properly. So, is there a difference between what uh, the legal profession is doing in Australia and the rest of the world? Are we up to speed? Are we behind? You know, I'm aware that in different countries there's a different level of development or reaction to AI. Yeah, look, I think uh, Australia is always interesting in the way that it thinks about changing the law. In the old days, you know, when I started the practice of law back in 1980, we looked very much to the UK and Canada, to a lesser extent the US, in working out how we change our law. Now I think the Australian lawyers and our parliaments are a bit like bower birds, actually. They go and look around the world at who's doing what in an interesting and clever way and then take bits of that and assemble their our own Australian way of doing things. And I think that's actually true of both sides of the federal parliament, that they're a lot more open to the view of well, let's work out what we think a good legal system should look like. We'll take a little bit of Canada, a bit of Singapore, um, a bit of Germany and so on and bring them together. And uh, I think that's a very good thing. Now, at the ACS, we're always very interested in the way in which IT is used in terms of skills development. So thinking about that in terms of, you know, the emerging algorithmic world and uh, the importance of data, what sort of skills does an IT professional need in, in terms of understanding and navigating through the AI consequences? I think for IT professionals, this is a really interesting opportunity point because I use the analogy when managing AI that it's a team sport. You need to bring together a range of skills to think about AI risks and harms and their mitigation. And IT professionals need to be part of that team, part of that conversation around what is really a multidisciplinary approach. And some IT professionals, I think, um, feel a bit uncomfortable in a world of sitting around a big table, uh, explaining things to non-specialists, engaging in a conver- in a broader conversation rather than, as it were, managing the plumbing of the IT within the organisation. So I, I would say to IT professionals that the, the super skill that everybody needs to develop around AI is how to play in a team, how to think about multidisciplinary approaches to considering how AI is used within organisations. Because the issues around AI are very seldom issues around the technology themselves. They're usually issues around the combination of people, process, technology and data. And unless you're bringing all of those considerations together in thinking about how they uh, impact um, uh, on AI and the way in which AI may be used, you can easily miss the point. So you might have very good technology when used by humans that understand the limitations of that technology, um, but that same technology may be complete rubbish when used by people that don't understand the limitations. So the people is a very important part of this process and the IT professional needs to be conscious of that when they enter the conversation around how technology, how data is being used and they ensure that the people that are using that technology and the managers within the organisations are aware of the limitations. So question for you, are you a glass half empty or a glass half full kind of guy? Are you optimistic about the AI driven future that seems to be emerging? I'm very strongly optimistic about AI and um, Part of the reason that I am is that I think that the evolution of AI and its capabilities is now so rapid that um, the potentialities that we've seen in the last 12 months, in particular around generative AI, are the tip of the iceberg of what 
we can achieve. Unfortunately, I'm much less optimistic about climate change. Um, I would love to be able to say that um, AI might be part of the solution to climate change, and uh, I very sincerely hope that it is, and if it is and can be, I'm very optimistic about our future. So I'm very optimistic about AI and what it can do, but um, I'm not so optimistic about climate change, and I'd love to see the two connected in some way. Peter Leonard, thanks for your time today. Thanks, David. To find out more about how the ACS is powering Australia's technology brilliance, visit us at our website, Facebook or LinkedIn. Want to get involved with the ACS technical boards? Email us at tab at acs.org.au and tell us a bit about yourself. Join us for more thought leadership, ideas and information through our other podcasts on the ACS YouTube, Facebook or on LinkedIn.